in jail, you probably know this. You're not supposed to sit on top of the table, right? You sit on the stool, on the chair part, right? And so he sat on top of his feet on the stool. Big mistake. So the one dude, the, the other dude's on the phone. He's not really on the phone, though. He's just pretending. So then the dude goes up to him to stalk him. He's like, you say he's going to smack me, white boy? He turns. Boom! Cracks him. He goes flat on the table. The dude drops the phone, comes running up. They swing him sideways on the table. So now he's on flat on the table like this. They're beating him out of his pants. They're, they grabbed him by his ankle. One got him by his face. They're whooping him. He's red in the face. They drag him off the table on the ground. The one dude's just standing over him, just wailing on him. He's sitting there, pants down here, red in the face, just like this, looking stupid. So I'm like, first lesson learned. Fellow Connecticut resident Jerry Ormond is on the show today to share how a fight landed him in the criminal justice system as a teenager in which he had to learn how to survive the horrible reality of youth prisons. I want to give a big thanks to everyone, the listeners, the viewers on YouTube who leave a comment on our YouTube podcast episodes or a review on our episodes on Spotify and Apple. It helps us tremendously get the show out there to more people. And remember, you could stay up to date on all the exciting things we have coming the Locked In podcast by following me on Instagram at Ian underscore Bick. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to lock in with Jerry Ormond. Jerry, welcome to Locked In, man. A fellow Connecticut resident coming from uh, Stanford. I think you're probably our first Stanford guest on the show ever. I got more for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Awesome. Yep. I love the Connecticut guys when they come on the show because then they recommend all their friends and their friends start texting me. And they're like, yo, can I come on? And it works out because the stories are great. Um, and you reminded me of 1090 Jake. We were just talking about, um, you, you said you're I Irish, right? <laughs> yep. You, but you've, uh, watched some of 1090's content. Of course. <laughs> How could you not? A lot of Connecticut people actually watch his stuff. I never watched prison content, um, before until I started making my own prison content. Yeah, I, I saw some, but it wasn't, it didn't hold my attention too long. I'll watch an episode or two, but this, this, this one's, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for every one, you know, and now you said three a week, so. Yeah, I'm we're excited. we're hustling, man. We're yeah. hustling. Um, you know, I just figure like you gotta leave no stone unturned. So mm -hmm. I think three is like the max I would ever go to. So mm -hmm. it's like let's push it to the max and try to pull it off. I mean, you don't know unless you try. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of work on my end, but uh, yeah. <laughs> like you can see, I'm a one man team now. I'm pretty You're much doing, doing everything. You're yeah, doing um, but it's fun, you know. It, it, I'm passionate about it. Um, but Jerry, man, um, you reached out to me on Instagram. And uh, you have an interesting story because it relates kind of to hockey. And mm -hmm. we know the A.J. Galante story, and that caught my attention. And he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a really good guy. Yeah. And he was literally just here before you I walked in. I can't believe in. I missed that. <laughs> have I you ever met him before? It. We've spoken on Instagram. I had showed love. When he put out the first podcast, I had just kind of just briefly, you know, said, you know, I could relate to the stuff that you guys are putting out. And, um, you know, just showed love. And he was super down to earth and uh, appreciated the love. And... You know, I'm, you just show a little bit of love, leave it alone. It's not, you know, I'm not a fan club or anything. But um, probably a couple of weeks later when they, they posted the Rough and Rowdy, when, uh, what's it, Diamond Hands, right? That's his name? Yeah, he was just here too. Oh, my <laughs> God. How did I miss that? Um, So I guess when he knocked the kid out and the kid was like, you know, all glassy-eyed talking about they stopped it too quick. So I had shared it, and then um, he had hit me back and was just like, you know, appreciate the love, whatever. So um, then when I tried to get on your podcast, I think I— I didn't hear it for like a week, so I was like, let me fish a little bit just in case. I was like, just in case I, I missed your your site or whatever. And uh, I had hit him up, or I, I, I tagged him. And then he had uh, hit me back and was like, I got you. I'm letting him know right away. And I'll just say, you did hit me back within an hour. So uh, <laughs> I guess it's good to, you know, tap in with certain people, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I think you had messaged me twice. And, like, I always try to go through my message requests. But, like, I, I'll look at one, and then if I don't, respond like I mean to respond mm -hmm. but it's just something else is happening and uh you said I don't think I I was like I don't I, think I pitched my story I, I, just, <laughs> I, I figured it would work it wouldn't have worked right so yeah. that's I, I was you know that's just a little strategy that's all no nah, I love that yeah. man and I yeah. love that you're ready to share your story because that's those are the best interviews mm -hmm. like you called me the other day wanting to prep it and um I think a lot of people are caught off guard that I'm so chill about it because mm -hmm. I just like the guests. To <laughs> I was like, man, this dude probably thinks I'm nuts, but I, I no. like I like to prepare. You'll you'll learn from the story that preparation is a big part of my success in the past. So yeah, I, I, this means a lot to me. I'll tell you about some of the things I want to want to come from this, and some of the things I try to do now to kind of right the wrongs and um, 
you know, this could just be part of that whole journey and just just something that with, from the heart, you know. It's, it's therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. And our I, kids now and stuff like we talked about. So yeah. it's just trying to be a good example. And I want to be able to give people the opportunity to share it in their own words, in mm-hmm. their own eyes without the host interrupting and bring them down a sidetrack or something like that. So without further ado, Jerry, uh, take us from the top, man. Like where, you, where? Let's start with where <laughs> you were from, where you are born, and we'll work our way through there. So uh, from Stanford, um, middle class Irish family. Father was a fireman. Mother was a social worker. Um, you, you know, as far as opportunities, an only child also. Um, as far as opportunities, I, I never, you know, really was told no. I, if with hockey, you know, it's very expensive. You know, my my parents would find a way to make it happen. But you know, it's not like I materialistically was like getting spoiled or anything like that. Um, but I had I had a solid upbringing, good family. You know, we're Irish, so there's some alcohol in the house. You know, you you have some, some rough nights sometimes, but uh, nothing. You know, people have it so much worse in the world. There's nothing I could, uh, you know, really thrive like worry about too much or or blame. You know, anything that I ever did on that. Um, but you know. It, it, you learn to be tough. Um, my dad always, he passed away, and that'll be part of the story, too. He passed away in 2018, but he always, um, he told me, don't, you know, don't take crap. Not to be a goon or a bully or a jerk, but, um, you know, stand on your own, too. If I came home and said somebody was bothering me when I was younger in school, first thing he'd say, what happened? Did you kick his ass? And not, you know, not that I'd be in trouble if I didn't or anything, but basically, you know, did you handle that? And, um, you know, a lot of times it'd be the beginning of a, me telling him I got suspended conversation or something like that, but, um. You know, just uh, blue collar upbringing. Um, so at a young age, I started playing hockey, as I was saying, and um, so I kind of got into this life where like, okay, hockey, something I really love, something I want to do for a long time. Um, so let me pursue this. And school was always a part of that package, right? Because if you want to play in college, you want to go pro, you got to have your grades too. So I was always kind of good on that end. Um, hockey always kept me at bay, and that's kind of what kept me on the good side of things when it came to life. Because Stanford, it's not the worst place in the world, but um. It's got its stuff, and uh, if you're not f- focused on something or you have your own goals, it's very easy to fall into nonsense. Um, another part of you know my younger years is I lived in North Stanford, which is actually like the nice part um, until I was 12. So across the street, we had this neighbor. He was like my big brother figure. Um, he, they were actually from down south. He was four years older, but his thing was he ran with these, uh, these, these guys. They were Albanian guys, um, and in Stanford, that's— Shout out to my Albanians. Um, that that's you know you, you know what that means if you live at Stanford. Um, you know those guys they don't play around. So uh, I grew up. He was older too, as I said. So I grew up kind of under the shadow of the older guys, him, his friends. Um, so kind of hockey's going on. I'm focused during that time of the year. But then when it's not hockey, he's not go out a little bit, go to parties, drink stuff like that. Um, so one night I'm out and. I run into the younger Albanians, like a year or two younger than me, through through some mutual friends. It's like early high school, and they and I, and they're cool. We're getting along. We're explaining our connections. Who we know. I know your you know your older cousin, your older brother, whatever. They end up getting into a problem later that night, and I'm based off my upbringing, watching. You know, I kind of look up to this guy. He's always telling me crazy stories. They're getting into stuff, whatever. So I'm like, this is my chance. I'm about to go off. I'm so I help them out, and um, you know, kind of. I don't know why that was important to me. Um. I think also a part I missed too, like in early elementary school, I, w- I was bullied a lot. I actually stayed back to kind because I was a little young for my grade so, or whatever it was. I stayed back so that it would be a better age group for me socially. So I think maybe I had that chip on my shoulder since I was young, young, because uh, just getting kind of picked on. And don't get me wrong, I, I held my own, but uh, it led to like temper, anger issues and things like that. So um, my parents got me the proper help. I go to classes and things to kind of work on my anger and you know, hockey, you know, and doing karate when I was a kid, too. It's all discipline-related things. So I think by the time I was in high school, I had a pretty good control over my my anger. But um, so now back kind of fast forward to that other story. Now I'm, I'm just kind of looking for that brotherhood, people to kind of have my back. Uh, you know, it's cool when you got boys and they have your back. And in Stanford, you're always, there's always stuff you're running into. Like in m- middle school, I uh, remember being downtown with my cousins, my Irish cousins. And we go to, like, the movies by the mall And we get shut down by, it was actually a classmate from my middle school that we saw him talking to this older guy that he knew. And they were rough guys from a rough part of town. They shook us down. I think it took like 20 bucks from me or something. So I've always been kind of calculated. So when that happened, I remember looking to my cousins and being like, leave it alone right now. These dudes are older. They'll they'll do us dirty, you know? So I'm like, we'll catch them at school. So we wait till Monday morning. This is the weekend. 
it's whoever catches them first. It's three of us. Me and my cousins are all pretty good size. We're not, you know, we're, we're not pushover. So I'm sitting in French class, and my, my buddy comes to the door. My buddy Kev, he opens the door. He goes, they got him. I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Run down the hallway. He slumped down the hallway, and my cousin caught him. So I was like, that was kind of that first feeling of, like, revenge, right? Like somebody did something to you, and we can, we can get them back, you know? And that was probably seventh grade or something like that. So it's kind of how it starts. Like, it's not like I'm, I'm you know— from the hood or anything like that, but I went to a magnet school. So in that same school, there's kids from every side of town because it's it's a lottery. There's no district. So literally, which is sad because when I move forward in the story later, kids go different directions when you get older. Next thing, they're doing things to each other because they're from opposite places. So we're all friends, you know, teammates. So I'm getting, you know, now I got my Albanian friends. I got my, you know, friends from every neighborhood in town. Um... So, you know, you're getting older, I guess, you get older, now we're going into high school, I got all these, you know, people I know, and then, you know, I've met some Dominican friends in high school as well, um, they were from New York and moved out here, one of them was just from out here, so now you're kind of moving to high school, hockey's progressing, um, you know, getting better, we actually moved to Darien, because uh, I played there since I was young, like nine years old, so my dad, when he retired from the fire department, he had flipped our house, and tried to, you know, he put work into it and tried to sell it for more money. So his plan was kind of to do that during retirement for fun. Um, so we, it just worked out. We were moving at the same time. As I said, I was lucky. I had a lot of opportunity. So my whole thing was, all right, can we move to Darien? It might be, and he figured it'd be a good investment. And then I could go to school there with the kids I played with since I was nine. Obviously, I knew it was going to be different. You know, Darien is, is a very, for those who don't know, it's a very wealthy town. Right over the border, but completely different. Um... It's not very diverse. Um, so I go there. You know, I know what I'm getting myself into. I know I'm there for a reason. But now we're getting older, high school, right? I stand for friends. You know, kids are selling weed, things like that. So now I'm, I'm you know, I make varsity freshman year. Um, obviously, at some point, these worlds are going to, right? I'm at Darien High. There's a lot of money there, right? So eventually that's going to come into play. But the main focus is hockey, first and foremost, at that time. So Make varsity one of at that time high school hockey is a lot more uh, like competitive nowadays. It's um, it's, there's there's other options these days for kids, sixteen to twenty one. Um, so high school is kind of not as good as it used to be. But back then it was really really good. Wait, the school actually had a league, a hockey league. Um, yeah, Darian, Darian. Da, we didn't have hockey. I don't well, think high school. Danbury? Did we have a? I don't think we had a, our own uh, immaculate. Hockey team. Immaculate they did. I don't team. think Danbury did. Or okay. like Brook or the surrounding towns. There might have been a co op. Beth- Bethel Brookfield sounds familiar. Because mm. I think Norwalk did that. Or who else? There was other co ops too. So I forget who, but okay, um, interesting. that may have been a co op. I think we were not to like most, but I think they were probably like Division Three. So mm-hmm. we didn't really play them. The only teams in Division Three we would play were like the um, county teams. And what year was this? Um, 05. I was a freshman. Okay. Graduated 09. So you're in like early 30s now? 33. 33, okay. Yeah. So um, So you make varsity freshman year? So make varsity freshman year. Um, One of two freshmen to make that team. That's how deep we were. And just to give you an idea of the talent level, the other freshmen played on Union, which is college, and uh, won a national championship and went to play pro in Europe. And me and him were the only freshmen on that team. He was third line his freshman year. So we were very, very good. So we won a couple of FCAC championships. We had a state semis appearance. Um, but I didn't start the first two years. It was actually my buddy. He was a starter since he was a freshman. So I got a lot more games than somebody in my situation would have got. But I kind of knew I started going to this camp in Minnesota. as like the best camp, literally one of the best camps in the world, ran by Ian Clark. The guy's a legend, um, goalie coach legend. I was a goalie, by the way. I don't know if I said that. I was a goaltender. So this guy got me on another level. Um, I knew when my time came to start, it was going to be, I needed one year. That's it. So junior year was my time. I'll, I'll give the numbers because I'm sure AJ's probably going to watch this. Just for him, I'll <laughs> yeah, give the he numbers. He watches every episode. 22 uh, <clears throat> games played my junior year, six shutouts, 93.7 save percentage, and 1.3 goals against average. So... Not to not to brag, but it's just stats. The camp that I had had a website with you enter the information every game, so that's how I know the numbers. So you enter the stats, and then it all adds up. So, net obviously, you know, prep schools, things like that. I'm talking to. I end up going to. Well, let me rewind to the side activity now, at Darian. So that's the hockey side, right? Then there's two of my good friends are they they got Stanford High with the weed, and they got West Hill with the weed. 
I might as well try to get a couple dollars of dairy in. Now, I'm not trying to go crazy because, you know, kids obviously talk and stuff like that, and I'm playing sports. But I got my network, my, my you know, 10 guys that were, were good, and, you know, I would do it differently. Those guys are in the bathrooms with their backpacks open. I'm, I'm in the, we're in the cafeteria, security guards surrounding. I'm passing under the table. We're right there in front of them. So just, just going, doing it differently. Um, and then on top of that, my cousin, like my younger cousins, they were like a year or two younger. They were now in high school. I was hanging out with them one day, and I kind of met some, some guys through them. My buddy Da, he'll come up later in the story too. So where I lived in Darien was literally a baseball's throw from Stanford. Like there's a river in between. It's it's basically Stanford, east side. So my boy Dan lived on, on DA, lived on the east side. He would walk across the bridge with him and his boys' money. They'd come see me. Then I'm going to, you know, I got my dairy and friends. So I got my own little flow. I'm not affecting anybody else, what they got going on. So I'm not in anybody else's way. It was a nice lane. I was quiet about it. It was it was nice. So the reason why I was doing that, obviously, like, I'm seeing what these guys around me are doing. And I didn't have to do that, but I didn't really have time to work either. You got to remember, I'm real busy. I'm training. I'm hockey's every day, damn near. So, like, I don't really have a way to get my own money. This is easy. Probably didn't have to, but at the same time, I'm trying to dress the same way. I'm trying to, you know, be able to do the same things when I'm out having fun. Couldn't you have just asked your parents for the money then? No, no. See, that's what I'm saying. It wasn't that good. Okay. Um, And then those years, we hit a brick wall because that investment went bad. So I, I see I didn't mention Steve, thank you. I didn't mention that. When they tried to sell the house, they had to give it to the bank because it wasn't selling. So they lost everything. So do you feel like you were pressured to try and go and make money for yourself? Um not by can, them, can but I be by the honest, thing. I think just seeing like when you go to a friend's house, you see you got a shoebox full of money. It's your friends, right? Tell me who you hang out with, that's who you are, right? I think I just wanted to have that type of money. It, it's almost like you want to keep up. Does that make sense? You kind of want to fit in though, too. Uh, but it was, but I, but I really, it wasn't to be cool though. For for me, mm -hmm. um, I didn't even want people to know like that, because back then you get in trouble for a dime bag, like you literally get you got bond and everything. Like it's, I'm not trying to deal with that. I'm an athlete. That's gonna mess everything up, right? I don't even want my parents to know. So it's like definitely not trying to let the police know, right? So and that was the thing. I always got made fun of for that, but. I hung it up with that stuff a few years ago, and 15 years, I never had any issues with that type of stuff as far as the law. So they could say what they want. They made fun of me then, but I obviously, you know, made my couple dollars for a long time, for almost 15 years. Mm -hmm. So um, back to then, you know, just kind of, so I got my network. So now I'm moving on. Now I'm going to private school. So I get recruited South Kent. They're number one ranked in New England. Um, six NHL prospects on that team. I know I got a battle for my job. They kind of give me a rundown of who I'm up against. Like I said, I learned from the best. Like Mayweather, right? You got to be confident. Mm -hmm. Like it's not cocky. It's you put in the work, you know you got it. So without the details of who was who, because it's kind of, a, you know, it's not really a hockey podcast, right? But it was a situation I was very confident. So I walk in and I see the guy I'm, that's supposed to start. He's the assistant coach's brother. And I'm like, he's like, he's, I'm sizing him up. He's overweight. I'm like, there's no way. I just know there's no way he's better than me. There's no way. So we go through the whole process, tryout start. First tryout, it's straight scrimmage. I shut him down for like 20 minutes straight. They get me out of there. I'm thinking, okay, he's good. Let's look at somebody else. The other guy's getting smoked. Five, 10 goals a pop, getting lit up. So I'm like, oh, I got it. First day's great, right? We go through the rest of tryouts. I, I did fine. No worse than anybody else. You know, Maybe not a great day every single day, but we're also not skating as much because we're living at private school. So like when you're home... You have, there's a preseason, like a fall team. <clears throat> there's a fall team, but like you're there like once a week on the weekends. You just play a game. You go back to school. It's it's hard to get on the ice when you're at private school. They do like a skate once a week. So tryouts go good. The results come out. I don't make the team. And mind you, they gave me 25 grand. It's a 40 grand tuition at the time. My father had a home equity loan, as I was saying, to do all the work on the house. So that's the only reason they even had the other 15 laying around. They, they never had it like that. You know, 15's a lot. So I'm saving them 25 grand. Like, I was proud of that, you know? why? That comes from the hockey team's budget. So why would they give me that unless they were—that's a pretty big amount to give away, you know? There, there was some nonsense behind the scenes. I found out later the headmaster had a deal with a kid that graduated the year before. His two brothers, they were coming for full tuition, 40 grand each. That's 80 grand for the school. So I guess 
They bumped me. They thought I wasn't going to. I knew I was going to surpass the other two, but I needed to prove it. I didn't get my shot because they didn't even pick me because they had to slide the other kid. He was a goalie. So they slid him in. Halfway through the season, they're getting smoked. They're losing games 10-9. Anybody who knows hockey, that's unheard of. These, go- these guys are landing 10 goals and 22 shots, two of them. The, the six prospects, they go, we want to do redo goalie tryouts. Why, why is Jerry not on our team? They offer me to redo tryouts midseason. I tell them, go, screw themselves. Because at this point, I was playing player on the second team for fun. I sold my gear. I'm like, I'm done. I'm just going to graduate. I was, I was bitter. I was. So at this point, I haven't taken a shot in a month and a half. You want me to come save the day? That's not fair to me because I know I'm not going to be 100%. It's not even fair. So I blow that opportunity. Next thing you know, we uh, we get into it. Me and, Well, I didn't say my right-hand man from Norwalk, he was there with me at the time. And he was kind of a street guy too, low-key. Nobody really knew. Not street street, but we had connections, people we knew. We get into it with the all-New England defensive end on the football team, which is basically all-state. We get into it with him one day. It was really my boy that got into it with him, but we're a lot smaller than the dude, so like I had his back. The way we came up, you always jump in. Like Unless you just are thrashing him by yourself, you always jump in. There's never Stanford's kind of like there's no fair ones. Like If there's five of you and two of us, we all fight. It's just how it always was. So this dude's big. There's no way I'm letting him beat my boy up in front of all these people at school. There's no way. So we get into it with the dude. We're basically in the middle of the cafeteria. We stand up. We're like, what's up? Like, And this, this is kind of now where things converge, right? Because hockey ship is sailed. Now I'm just here. I'm, I don't really care anymore, to be honest. I'm, I'm mad. My whole plans are ruined. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm, I'm now now I'm, I'm more of the temper is kind of shorter now. Like I'm not as happy. So this situation happens. I'm like, let's fuck this dude up. Excuse my language. So teachers come, break it up. Everybody go back to their dorms. The problem is... He's in my dorm, two doors down. So, in a single dorm. So, like, it's smaller than this room. It's, like, like smaller than a jail cell, the single room. Really, really small. So, I get to knock the door. It's him. <laughs> I'm by myself. He's huge. So, he's like, what's all that shit you were talking to? I don't know what to do. I see a pencil on the table. But I pick it up. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, take a step towards my, you know, I, I remember my Albanians. I dare you swing. I dare you. I seen crazy shit they do. I'm bluffing. I don't want no smoke with this dude. He's going to strangle me in this room. I'm, I, I, I won't come out. This will be the last room I go in. So I jab at him. Like, I'm, like I, I faint at him. Like, I'm going to, like, I'm going to stop. I slam the door in his face. Lock him. Pussy. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. So I call my boy. He comes running over. Fuck that. Going back to your dorms. All that. He comes over. Dude left. So I'm like, damn. Now I got real beef at private school. With the dude two doors down. That weekend we go home. We find out he's going home too. <clears throat> Somebody calls him from a payphone and tells him that uh, the you know to, to link up at a commuter parking lot. I think what those people were gonna do was watch from the car and have somebody else come there too and just whoop his ass. That way he can't go back to school and tell. He doesn't want to meet up, so they tell him where he lives and his mother's name. And tell him that he better cut the shit, basically. We come back to school Monday. He's not even looking at me anymore. Your friends called him and did this. Somebody somebody called. Yeah, it was my friend. I, I might have been listening. Was this even a serious thing? Like, what, what was this even over? The, I don't know who we thought we were, mm-hmm. to be honest. I can admit that. I know it sounds like I kind of thought you guys were a bunch of little mobsters, like <laughs> the Albanian mobsters. I'm not going to say around. that because I who was just here. And <laughs> I don't want to, because it's clown shit compared to that. But I guess, but yeah, like... You don't want to be, it's like, I'm not stupid enough to be like on some full-fledged gun busting hood shit, right? I'm not, I'm not, I don't need, like, there would be no reason for me to do that. But I see how these guys are getting their financial aid around town from where I'm from and stuff. And Stanford's like a mafia town, too. Like, there was a big Magali presence. My buddy's dad, they kicked in the door in middle school, took him away for five years when they wrapped all them up. So I was like, I think my uncle was like, best, one of them was in a best man with, with Tony Magali himself. I think... Maybe, well, I think he might have been best man of my uncle. Um, something like that. But, um, so we, we grew up with these people. So it's like, they're kids, they're, you know, I didn't want to bring that up too much, but you get what I'm saying. Did your parents see you going down a different path once your hockey dreams were over? So I'm happy you brought that up because I was about to forget this. The first time my dad knew I was on some different, like, crazy stuff was the same friend from South Kent. We were meeting up at the train station in Stanford. We are going to go to the Ranger game. As we're driving... There's like, if anybody knows downtown Stanford, there's like a four-lane road next to the highway. It's like a wall right there. 
some dude um older like so older guy in his truck with his son it just so happened to be Hispanic not that it matters he um he almost ran us off the road so I'm like oh shit I'm in the car with my dad the guy flips us off and then we go to turn under to go into the train station he starts following us this is when I'm 16 I'm kind of running with the Albanians a little bit running around get you know scrapping here or there I'm, I'm feeling the type of way now because the way they were it's like pop quick like like pants up what's up like you know what I mean that type of you know Obviously, I know it's not okay now, but at the time, right? So, I told my dad, stop. He gets scared. Like, what? Stops. I get out the car, and I run up on a dude. I go to, I'm trying to open his door. He locks it. So, my dad, he was kind of tough, too, but he's old and broken down, like fireman, body shot. He, he like, I feel like he didn't know what to do, and he, he runs up behind me, so he kind of, like, had my back. I see the guy's son in the car. Go, please, please, I'm with my son. You know, I'm, like, talking shit. All right, stop being a tough guy with your son in the car, whatever. We leave. But that was the first time I doubt. I know he was like, yo, this dude, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with him? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. But like I said, there's that temper and that chip on my shoulder from when I was little. Now we're private school, um, beef with this kid. That settles down. Now we got kids that, like, their parents have money. You know, drug addicts, whatever. So the dude's on, like, like basically he wants ecstasy pills, right? I'm getting him in town for $10. He pay $30, $40 a pill. You want 10 20 of them. Why wouldn't I grab those and bring them back on Monday or Sunday? So that's kind of how things kind of were combining. Long story short, I get to a point where now I'm home one weekend. While all this is going on, there's an ongoing feud at home with my boys and these other kids, my younger guys. They get they got this ongoing feud. There's multiple incidents, fights, tried to rob. Somebody tried to rob this one dude that was from the other group, whatever. We I'm home one weekend. We find out this dude. It's saying he wants to kill our boy's brother that tried to set him up. He's online with ARs. He wants to do what? Well, he goes to Stanford High. So we find out that the kid's brother. So let me let me give you the rundown with the friend group. It's going to get this guy, that guy, right? It's going to get confusing. My two goal defendants end up being these guys, Austin and AT. My cousin Cody, he'll be in the story a lot too. Um, so Austin, my Cody, is brothers with this kid that he threatened. So... Austin goes to Stanford High. He doesn't go to Stanford High. I hear he's there by himself. Look for the dude. So me and my Cody AT, we speak on the phone. I'm in Norwalk getting my haircut. We speak on the phone. Oh, he's at Stanford High. So we're like, oh, crap. We got to go help him. So we go. We get there. As we're pulling up, we see the dude that we don't really like. Mind you, I don't know how old these kids are, but the one dude is huge. He looks like The Rock. Not that big, but like if The Rock didn't work out and was like two inches shorter, he'd look like The Rock. He's big. So... We see them in like a group of six. I see my boys coming up. One of my boys and my cousins coming across the street. Kind of give each other the eyes. Like, mind you, there's a bunch of random brawls and fights that go on over the years. Like I said to you on the phone, I'm not going to go through every war story because there's a bigger message to this story. But um, that, you know, this is the one of the biggest things that happened that led to my prison sentence. So we go in this parking lot, Stanford High. They're in the middle of the parking lot. There's cameras everywhere. I'm, like I said, strategic, so I'm like, all right, I'm not going to park right here. Obviously, we're going around the corner. I got a distinct red car, too, two-door, which didn't help because when you have to leave after, you're trying to get, you know, <laughs> it was not it was not the best, but we made it work. I, we walk in the parking lot. As I said, we already kind of saw each other, like, all right, like, everybody, my cousin, even my boys that aren't fighters, like, oh, shit, they see us, they know, like, we're not supposed to even be there. We come in the parking lot. I see my boy from middle school, so I dap him up. Strategic, right? We're not just going to walk up. They go up to the side. I come over here to the other side. They don't even know I'm going to get involved, but I'm like, if anything goes left, these are my guy's younger brothers. I got to handle that. Like, I can't. How do I look going back to them? Oh, I watched them get their asses whooped. Because they were a lot smaller than this dude. Those are my boys. They were tough. But this dude is big. Like, it's not a, not, not a pushover. So, the, the mind you, they were more tie fighters, too. I never brought the boxing back into it. I was training, too, around this time again. Once I came home, because I had came home from school, well, I'll get there. I'll get there. So these guys are more tie fighters. So he goes to square up to the big dude, the, the kid's brother, Austin. He throws a, a one-two and a kick. This big-ass dude catches his kick, dumps him on his head like a freaking power bomb, bleeding from his head. So AT jumps in. They kind of get him down to the ground. When I run up, AT's kind of wrestling. Now, I don't know if I remember exactly, but this is the story I'm, I went with, all right, because because there was lawsuits involved. Um, so anyway... To me, it looked like they were wrestling over the waistband. Because usually if somebody's on top of somebody trying to hit them, you'd be covering up, right? 
they're down here with it. His face is wide. So I just start kicking. Mind you, like, D1 hockey legs here. Like, I don't even realize how hard I'm kicking this dude. So after the third kick, and I'm in the heat of the moment. At the same time, a dude's going to the trunk to grab a bat or lacrosse stick or something. My cousin sees it, clocks him on the camera. You see the dude go flying. My other boy, one of the Dominicans, he's holding. I don't know what he did, but he had three or four of them kind of held up. Like, yo, don't don't try it type shit. For some reason, they listen. Um, he, he had a reputation, so they listened. Um, so then we kind of on the other dude. I kick him once, twice. Three times, and I didn't mean to because I'm in the heat of the moment. But now looking back, he went out. Then I kicked him again. And that was not, I just lost, like I told you that, that Albanian, that it's turned up, that mentality. Like, Where do you think all this anger came from? I was just riding out, bro. At this point, I, I don't even think I was angry when the situation happened. It was just like, oh, we got, like, you're like, kind of like, we're not a gang, but it's like, we, we're, we, like I said, there's a lot of things that happened before, too. Like, and this is like sophomore year of high school? Or? Um, At this point, I'm, I repeated my junior year. Okay. Um, So you're like 17. Yes. Eight, almost uh, 18. I'm sorry. Just <clears throat> turned 18, of course. That's another key detail. Just turned 18 like 20, 30 days before. Mm -hmm. So he's now, f f I mean, I didn't see it because, and it's crazy because if you watch me on the video, it's like, like a movie, I just walked off. Oh, like, this is all on video. Yeah, yeah right, <laughs> right on the damn camera, bro. Like, <sighs> what are we doing, right? So, but you don't plan, you know, sometimes it's not what you plan. So so you kick him. He, he's, so we run, so every he, one dude's broken, you know, well, I'll get there, got hit hard. He's laid out, the other dude's backed off. We all slide out. You see me on camera, it's like a movie, kick, kick. I'm looking around. People are running towards it. I'm walking, like, through, like, so I'm not trying to attract attention. <clears throat> Excuse me, attention. So... We get to the car. We find out he's seizuring, foaming out the mouth. Like, they're talking about he might die. Like, so I'm like, fuck. We, we, we're we leaving. The cops are zipping by us, literally. We're, like, I'm just, there's side streets right there. Super tactical. Got up out of there. Dropped them off, the, the Austin, Austin, Austin AT by Chapin. Jump on the highway back to Norwalk. Alibi. This is a 30, 40 minute period. 20, 30 minute. It wasn't, it was quick. From the time I got to Stanford, from my, my haircut, in Norwalk, I was there quick. It happened quick. I'm back on the highway going to my friend in Norwalk. I'm in Norwalk the whole time. Because I don't know a lot of these Stanford High kids. I don't go there. So I'm like, I could probably pull this off. The only people that know me are the people that were with me. So I'm like, try to go that route, right? I get calls from everybody, like, changing my clothes. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm knowing I got to come home later. Getting calls, like, what'd you do? What you girls, guys? Yo, they looking for you, da, da, da. So I got to call my, my dad, right? I'm like, oh, man. I call him. I'm like, look, Skindo already obviously knows I'm getting into stuff. I said, I got a call. They said I did something. Something happened at school. Kid got hurt. It wasn't me, but they think it's me. I'm just letting you know if you hear anything. He called me like an hour later, like, yeah, come on. Because cause fireman, right? He knows all the cops. Somebody called him personally. I'm like, damn, got to do it, right? Because I can't make him look bad. Got to go stand on what I did, right? I go down there. As I'm walking in. My cousin's walking out. So, like, and I'm, you know, you're not going to show much. You're just kind of like, all right, like, go in, try to be good, whatever. I go in. So, they, you know, interrogation room time, right? Here we go. This is what we've been training for our whole lives, right? So, mind you, what did I say before? I don't even want my parents to know. The, you, you're done for having my parents in here because that's not about to help. I'm not about to admit what I just did to this dude in front of my parents. I, I'm... It's like not even 24 hours later. I'm shook. I'm thinking he's about to die. So they're playing a the good cop back home. Everything you see on TV. Um, sh shout out to those guys because I'm older now and they know my family. Kennedy's a good guy. Sergeant Red, son playing the NFL. Silas, they're, they're legends. Um, they're all right. They're not bad. Now that I'm older, I can, I can say that. They're, they were good to me. But at the time, you know, they're trying to help this family out. The kid's in the hospital. Critical condition. Side, big side, slamming on the table. He's like, uh, you know, you got to be honest with yourself and your family. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was in Norwalk and my hair cut him up. My friends, like, we could call the family right now. You can ask the mom when she saw me. Sticking to my story. I'm not I'm not budging. They try to leave the room. I'm going to give you a minute to talk to your parents. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm not saying nothing because I also know, like, this is serious. Like, because Tierra Taylor, my, the, the older neighbor, his name was Taylor. He had been to jail and stuff, too, at this point. So I know what time it is. Like. They had beat somebody with a bottle. Crazy. They, those dudes are crazy too. But um, 
I'm not, you know what I mean? Not that it's a good thing, but at the time, that, that's what was glorified. So I just know what time it is. So I'm like, I'm not saying shit. So they go to bring us into the room to call the family to clarify the story. They messed up because as, I mean, not that I was going to say anything anyway, but they bring me by the juvenile cells. My Cody's were 16. I see AT through the window. He's like this. I ain't say shit. I ain't say shit. So I'm like, all right, he wouldn't have said that. He say, he's saying that for a reason. So I'm like, right, we good. I'm not saying nothing. I mean, I wasn't going to say anything anyway, but I, I, I get this like gratification. Like, we good. I'm sticking with my story. They call. So the mom, she couldn't lie, right? But she was like, yeah, I could say I saw him at this time. I was upstairs because they're kind of, their family was cool too. They, they, she tried, but uh, it was wrong for me to involve them. But I was doing my best, you know, to try to get out of it. I knew they were kind of, they were kind of down a little bit. So like I knew, you know, they, they didn't give me any problems about it. I felt bad though. I felt bad involving them. So long story short, you get booked, um, $100,000 bond. I know they'll be able to get it, but I know it's going to be a little while. So, yeah, what, are your, what, what are your parents saying to you? <clears throat> Home equity loan, by the way, again, right? <laughs> um, they're just like, you know, they're like, fuck. They my, my dad was like, you fucking did it, didn't you? Like, you're so, you know, I think we had one of those moments. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, my mom was like, shut up. Like, whatever. So, I, I feel so bad. And what but, were the actual charges? Uh, so, first, you know, like the cushiony BS charges, like criminal trespass. The dude, okay, I did feel stupid about this, but like I said, dude was huge. He was 16 as well. I didn't know him. I see my man get power bomb. I'm, you know, dude's bigger than me. So I look kind of, if you read the article, it's like, yo, like this clown beating up little kids. But dude, dude, there's no pushover. Dude's a big boy. So where, where was I? So, oh yeah, interrogation room. Now, it's time to go to cell. We got nothing else to talk about. I'm in the cell. I hear the door open. My cousin Cody come back in. I guess they found out he broke his face in like two places. I'm like, fuck yo. Like, they, they got us like, and I, he trying to, I don't know, like, I, I forget if he tried to talk to me or not, but I was I'm not, I know this shit is bugging me here. I'm not saying shit. They're talking about he might die. So I'm, that's the part, this is the part where I wanted my credit because you, you should never fuck, if you engage in stuff, you you don't do nothing, you're not ready to, and that let's, lesson time, right? quick side lesson, you don't do nothing, you're not ready to take the consequence for it. If you don't know the consequence for it, you definitely shouldn't be doing it. These kids these days are crazy, but I wasn't planning on killing nobody. So... Then now's the time to talk because this manslaughter is not looking too good. You know what I mean? And I held it down, and it and it, it was tough. It was very tough. But I found out like a day or two later he was good. I, I ain't gonna lie. I went home that night. I was because once I, I got out, like I don't even know how long it was. Probably five hours or something. They uh they had the money from the loan, but they couldn't get to the bank or something. I forget what it was, but they had it worked out with the bondsman. They came and got me. So I go home that night. I'm you know I. I smoked a lot of party. I didn't smoke nothing. I just went to bed. I woke up the next day. I'm like, shit was a bad dream. Like, that's how I felt. Like, it was this eerie pit in my stomach. Like, damn. I really, had, like, I really, because my, my boy Taylor, right, I always follow in his foot. I'm like, damn, I had to follow him this far, right? I had to. I'm like, I'm an idiot. Not not that I'm blaming him, but it's it was my, f I should have knew better. But it was just like, damn, I really had to find out for myself. Like, I'm definitely going to jail. I know what time it is. So we're fighting the case. Um, for, they try to say one to five fucking, excuse my language. They were like, uh, you know, the PSI, which was f flawless. It was beautiful, you know? So I think it put out to one year eventually. But, um, in that year that we were out fighting the case, my young boys is going absolutely crazy. And I, I can't even, we don't even have time to go through it all right now. They stole like 15 luxury cars. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Quick backtrack. When I, so I went back to South Camp. One night a teacher comes in. He tries to say, they basically say close your laptop lights out rule. They haven't enforced this rule September. It's January. I sit up, and this is after my case. I go back to school after I catch the case. While you're fighting your case. Yeah, so I get out. I go to school like the next Monday or whatever. I sit up. I look at him. I go, and he knew what happened. I'm like, you haven't enforced this rule all year. Everything going on with me, now you're going to bother me? I said, if you come take this laptop from me, I'll close it. I said, if you're not going to come take it from me, close my door. So I didn't threaten him, but it was a little tense. So the next morning, the forum dean came up to me, and he was like, look, you're not getting kicked out of school. We love you. We know you're a good kid. We're going to transition your credits so that you're a senior. We're going to send you work from home. This is why it's good to be good to people and show them your best, the best version of you because they'll look out for you. 
Um, we'll send you math and English from home. You finish a couple packets, graduate. We'll send you prep school diploma in the mail. I'm shocked they didn't bit, kick you, expel you for getting arrested they're, for they're this like, fight. They're like, it has nothing to do with school. You're good. You're, but it's got to be all over the news and whatnot, right? But it's Stanford. It's upstate a little bit. They don't really. Okay. I mean, they knew. They kind of turned a blind eye. Yeah, yeah. So um, back home now, right? Because this is how I got. Now I'm home every day. Mm -hmm. Got So now I got a whole spring, summer, and fall before I'm going away. Imagine the parties. You know girls love this shit. It's pathetic, but they love this shit. We're all getting in trouble. The parties, we're lit. They're, these dudes are stealing cars. And you're I, a part of that? Um, Which part? You're a part of stealing cars? No, so, so, so this is the thing. I'm not directly involved in a lot of these things I'm about to say, but I just want to give you an idea of, like, we weren't just some, like, Malibu's most wanted shit, bro. Like, this was like, we were really trying to get financial gain. Um... They they were, they had stolen guns from a home, a couple home invasions. A lot of this stuff was already settled, so it's not like I'm telling things people don't know or anything. Um, home invasions, get kidnapped dudes for drugs. Even on a smaller scale, at high school, I remember they leave a dude in his boxes at the bus stop because he thought he was gonna sell weed at West Hill. Like these are dude, high school dudes kids is cruel, doing man. Dudes is cruel. High like, school kids doing this. Our team was pretty cold, bro. But like we're not, like I said, we're not mm. thugged out killers, but we're pretty cold, bro. Like, Jeez, but we man. had friends from the hood because everybody. Went to school together and party. You go to a party up north in the woods, everybody's going to be there from everywhere. There was parties where guns got pulled out up north. Like, you never hear something like that. Um, that was, you know, not to be discussed further, but, like, just to give you an idea of the landscape, like, it's not just a bunch of, you know, rich kids thinking they're badass. Like, it's 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 everybody's hanging out together. Everybody benefits, right? Because it's like, and, and not to say that I wasn't genuinely friends with these people, but everybody benefits. The dudes from the hood would love to ride around the kids' BMW and go to the mansion party. And we would love to have the kids from the hood when these dudes try to mess with us when we go to a party out of town. And we're washing them up. So it's like everybody's benefiting. It's 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 fun. We're having good times, great times. Um just on uh, so on and so forth with all the there were so many more things. So a couple weeks after I left school, I get a call from I stopped playing stupid. We did this situation. It was mainly my other right hand that was still at school, the one I was telling you about. He orchestrated for them to basically get the the school van that followed like the hockey bus that bring like the equipment. They had this like probably thirty thousand dollar van, like a Chrysler van or something. They figured out how to get the keys overnight. We had this young kid that loved us. We definitely corrupted him. We did. I'm, I'll say it. We corrupted him. It was bad. Dude stole the car. I'm home though, so I'm out the picture. They can't say it was me. My boy Da. They convinced Da because Da knew his. He was a. Bronx guy, so he knew like like he always went to Yankee Stadium stuff. So he knew the area out there well. We were gonna go to Jerome Ave and chop it. You were gonna get like fifteen racks for it. So I get a call from Dave. He's like, "Yo, I need you to drive my car to the city. What risk is this for me? I take his car out there. I just need you to follow me, pick me up, bring me back. Got a couple racks for you. Hell, three three hour trip for a couple thousand. We out. We go up there. We bring the car." I never step foot in that car. For if anybody from my school sees it, I got love for them. I never step foot in that car. But I did follow. Um the, the kid who stole it was driving. My boy was in shoddy giving them directions. We 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 go to the chop shop. We found a chop shop through somebody or whatever. We go to the chop shop. They negotiate 15 grand. They park it, you know, away, just in case they're on some like police stuff, whatever. They park it down the street. They go to bring it, but like New York's so loopy with the turns and the no turn this way, left on left, whatever. They take a wrong turn, get pulled over on the way to the chop shop after negotiating. I'm like, damn. Not answering. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm sitting in like the middle of the, I think that's the uh, Bronx, I believe. Yeah, Jerome Ave. I'm in the Bronx. I don't know what's going on. Come to find out they get booked. A cop, I hear a cop answer. I know, I know it's a cop. You know, older Caucasian male. I'm like, oh shit, I hang up. I'm like, we out, we leave. Find out they get booked for joyriding. They don't know that that we were going to chop it. So the chop shop guy was good, but just made a stupid turn. But just to give you a sense of the, and I thought it was funny, you know, you leave press school and you're trying to freaking take the van and stuff. We're just little assholes, but there was financial gain was the motivation. Like, not to just be mischievous, but it was kind of funny at the same time. That, that was our humor. <laughs> like, I took the van. Like, and, and you didn't care that you were doing all this while your case was pending? Um, No, because I was just driving to the city and back. They mm -hmm. didn't tell me I couldn't leave the state. No, but like you weren't saying like, okay, I screwed up. Like I'm facing some serious charges. Let me stay on the clean and narrow. Like what's your mindset at um, that time? Don't get caught. 
So you, you did, that didn't that arrest didn't scare you at all. It didn't make you think about so, anything. So for, in regards to that specific situation, I feel like it was no risk. But I, I'll agree with you from the standpoint. I was I was still selling bud because when I came home, now I'm like I don't got no money. I'm home. We're partying all the time, and I and I racked a couple couple thousand up. Like it wasn't like I was just blowing everything. But you know, you you get a couple ounces of they called it piff back in the day. So this is what I was telling you where. Uh, Again, we'll bring it back to the Dominicans. My God, I love my Dominicans so much. I really do. I haven't heard the word piff in a while. That was so, a thing so you know, in high Okay, school. so you know yeah. about the piff. Okay. So uh, my my right, basically, my, I would consider him my right-hand man at the time, and I'm pretty sure he would consider me one of his aces, Um, you know, direct plug, Washington Heights. So I, I knew him for a little while at this point, but he was known, too, that, like, if he didn't like you like that, he'll go out there with you. Yeah, you want to get some piff? All right, let's go. Go in the building, never come back. See you in Stanford. See me when you see me. It is what it is. Why get your hands dirty if you don't have to, right? Like so, and he could back it up, and he, you know, he had the resources for sure. But it's just like smooth. He's a smooth cat. So smooth cat. Same way, like when we used to ride out there, we'd be like 17, 18. They had like a a thirty five year old, like somebody's wife driving us. Like so, he was smooth. He, you know, this is my guy to this day. He's a smooth, smooth dude. He he actually did ten years. He came home now. He's doing his thing. He he drives cranes in New York City. He's doing his thing. I'm proud of him. Um, but yeah, he did 10. He was, he was a wild boy. Um, so yeah, we, we, once I went two or three times, I'm like, all right, like just send you with the bread, bro. Like, Cause I'm like, I'm not, I'm not about that Rikers Island life, right? Like being accountable, knowing what you can stand, what you can handle. Don't, don't get yourself in too deep. So after two or three times, knowing my money was safe. I'm like, all right, bro, I'll just send you. So yeah, bring my stuff back. I wasn't any like big time. I'm selling doves, eighths. But you were stretching it because it was such fire. You know, you're selling point eights for 20. Like, you were, you were killing them. It was good. You're going to probably get 35 bags out of an ounce. Probably doing, like, probably, like, four ounces a week. You know, light. Couple, make a couple thousand, spend some money, got free weed. Like, you know, whatever. Trying to kind of stack up so I have some when I get home, too. Like, whatever. So, all that crazy stuff going on. They start catching cases. Basically, it's going to happen. We're all going to jail at the same time. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. And then, so now it's sentencing. Um, did you, there was no plea deal for you? So it, it came to the final deal was, was one year. So they wanted jail time from you. Yeah. You know, they, they make it sound like it's, but you know, the lawyers, maybe cause but my wife, my wife your, works in the courts now. This so is I think your bullshit. first offense though. Um, yeah. Is it because it's a violent act that they wanted jail time for me? Violence on school property. He was younger. I guess I get it. Um, and I got double time too, cause I got a year. My Cody's got six months. They were 16, like I said. So, but I, I was fine. Like, I, I understood. I was like, maybe give me nine or something. I'm like, damn, double? Like, that's crazy. But it is what it is. I, you know, you try for like a TS or something once you get in there, nine months. But there was they weren't having that because it was fine. You, you weren't scared at all? Um, I, I knew my, my older brother figure got through it. He was, you know, he was tough, but he wasn't the toughest guy in the world. So it's like, all right. I knew I was going to know some people. So I'm like, you got to play your cards right too. I was taught that. So, um, we, 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 well, this is another reason this is a funny part too. We get sentenced. Um, we all get, my, my Cody's went in the month before. I, I have my Christmas, my birthday, New Year's. I'm, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I go January 6th. I'm not, they're crazy for going before Christmas. If they want to get out the way six months, we'll be home by summer. So they were already in custody, but we had the same date. They bring me in. At, my cousin Cody got sentenced the same day. He took three for one punch. It's a mean punch. Um, he, he comes in later too. That's my, my brother. That's like my little brother. Um, we get sent same day, you know, mad support, good friends, courtroom packed. Um, it was like a movie. It was crazy. We, we, we get taken away. And it was cool because we got to hang out early. They didn't really take me until like two. Mm -hmm. So I was hanging out from like seven to two. We, we, was getting, we were getting lit. It was fun. Um, I went in. I mean, I mean, you know, try to be fun, right? It's freaking crazy to say. But uh, I get brought in the back. Now, here's the thing. I'm 18. Am I going to county or am I going to MI? Gladiator school, right? That's, that's what I've been told. That's what every single person says. Yeah, so I'm like, but but this is the thing. Everybody else is going to gladiator school. So let's go, so do I want to go share a cell with somebody my dad's age in county? Or do I want to go with my, my guys to gladiator school? So I was kind of like, all right, whatever. It, whatever happens, happens. I kind of want to go with my friends. I'm going to be honest. So they put me in a grown man cell in, in the court, like when they took me in the back. I'm like, fuck, they're about to take me to county. Damn, all right, well, whatever. I heard it's chiller there, I, whatever. I wait a couple little while, whatever, they take me out. You know, it was like eight guys on the chain or whatever, the thing, whatever, the multiple cuffs. They put me first, but I'm by myself. They take me out by myself, so I'm like, all right. 
and I see my guys in the cell on the way in that, that were in custody. They already been down for like a month. They're smaller than me. They're they're not like not that size is everything, but I'm 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 more ready. I'm older. I'm stronger. I, I've been training for like nine months since I caught my case. I got back and trained heavy. He wasn't training me for no twelve round fight. He's training Calizans in Norwalk. He's a legend. My bones is all shins. I was doing Muay Thai at the time too. Thirty seconds trying to get you out of there. It's not no playing around that. That shit had me in killer mode. I was ready to go. I'm like nineteen in a twenty one facility. I'm a big fish in a small pond. Let's go. I know I got eighty percent of them. There's gonna be 20% still monsters, there's just nothing you could do about it. But I'm like, I, I feel confident going in. So they put me on the chain. Um, my boy uh Banger, he he was from one of the projects. I was I grew up with these kids. I, that was the first hood I used to go to when I got my license. Like going to the hood and show my boys. Uh, if they from from Con Ave, but it's sad because later I got cool with these guys from the village and those guys ended up going and getting along. So I don't want to say one side and not the other. You know, I love all you guys. It's not, I don't never pick sides. I always stay neutral. But um, my buddy Banger, I haven't seen him in 18 months. He comes walking up like, yo, with hair all along. And so I'm like, yo, this is crazy because I know he's an MI. I'm happy to see him, but I'm like, I'm going to jail. I shouldn't be happy, but I was happy to see him. They chain him up next to me. Then they take my Cody's out. They chain. So it's like eight, nine people on there and like six of them is my boys. And they're in between me and anybody else. So how much more comfortable could you be on a ride to jail? So I'm here, but we're all talking shit. Like we're fucked. Like, and then a dude on the other side, is like, like, cause they had the, the double side of the ice cream truck. Some dude we couldn't see, we didn't know. Like, they heard, they figured out my name was Jerry. Like, don't cry, Jerry. You are gonna be all right. Like they're just fucking with me. And so I'm like, man, I'm, I got my guys with me right now. I know I'm good right now. So, it's it's real when you get there. The guys in custody is your sandwiches back to yourself. <laughs> it's just me and my cousin now. And they just brought in like 10 dudes from Hartford that just beat the dog shit out of somebody. And they are turned the fuck up. And they put us in the cell with these dudes. Me and my cousin back to back on the wall. They're looking at us. They're fucking with us. Like, oh, shit. Like, and, and the guards must have peeped it because they switched us out of there. We didn't, we didn't say nothing. We were ready to do it if we had to. But, I mean, ready, ready. We would have got washed up. But, we, we, you know, you would have had to do it because if you don't fight back, it's only going to be worse. Um, but they, they put us in a cell like over there. And I think, did you say they called you Harry Potter when you went to jail? Yeah, they I were called me Harry Potter, McLovin. Dude, we don't all fucking uh, like Harry Potter, all right? <laughs> they figured they started that shit once they put me in others. And, and, and I had all types of friends. I, by they, I mean those 10 individuals. Um, respect to all backgrounds. I, I had all, every type of friend you could imagine growing up. So uh, by they, I mean those 10 individuals. Um, so the you know the Harry Potter bullshit, and now I'm in other cells. I'm like, yeah, all right, like you know, I've got. I wasn't saying shit when we were over there. I'm not even gonna lie to you, but it was funny because uh, I was I was like, you know, look, look, you know, just like, oh man, this shit is crazy. So they give us our stuff. They will, so NYI's there's a main building, and then there's cottages. So you got to go outside to get to your unit. People out the window, fresh meat, all that. You know, it's a kids facility. So you know, growing, you wouldn't play that shit. Growing, I feel like dudes would probably take it really seriously. So even though you were 18, they still put you at a kids facility. I had, so I took the year to fight the case. I turned 19 in December. So I just turned 19 when I went in. Um, it's a 21 and under. Okay. And I only had a year. So figured I'd probably be there the whole time. You never really know. They can move you any day. That's the thing about jail. It's weird. Like they could pick you up and move you whenever they want. So we go to intake. Not, nothing too crazy. You know, I, I had a pretty wild cell. He was my boy, my boy Casey from New Haven. If he ever sees this, shout out to him. But he was wild. The first like almost problem I got in, there was this tall dude from Waterbury. He was probably like seven feet tall. This dude was huge, but he was like a skinny as hell. But like a Caucasian kid, but tatted up, looked like he was probably like in the Bloods or something. He was definitely a gang kid. So my boy, Casey, he's little. He's at the door. The other dude's like peering down. He's huge. And my boy goes, says, yeah, my boy said like, you know, so you look like a, a Q-tip or some shit. I didn't say it though. I'm like, fuck, man, come on. Like, why are you doing this to me? So I'm like, I'm like, can, can, you, can you please tell him I didn't say that? <laughs> I'm not trying to go to segregation, bro. I heard that shit is crucial that when they put you in the box, I'm like, that's the one thing I was scared of in jail was the box. I'm not scared of another guy. But I'm like, yo, I'm not going to the box because you just told this dude I called him a Q-tip. Can you please tell him? So he let the dude run his mouth. What? What did he say? Da, 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 da. So then Kesey goes, matter of fact, he didn't say that. I said that. What's up? So it was like, it was funny. You know, stuff like that. Bully or whatever. So the kids run his mouth. This is the first crazy thing I saw. The kids run his mouth. Some other kids. He's just, this, this tall kid is out of control. So he gets into it with the kids from Bridgeport, from PT. They're young boys, like 15. He says some shit like, word to my mother, I'm going to smack the shit out of you. And in there you say, word to your mother. It's like, you, if you don't do it, you're soft basically once you say that. So it's like, oh, he's dead serious. So we can hear them through the vents because we're on the other side. It's like, oh, breakfast, he's oh, he's because there's two of, two of them dudes from PT. He's like, they're done for. <laughs> so 
it just so happened they switch him over to our side before wreck because it's intake. So they're shuffling dudes left and right. So, excuse me. So they switch him to our side right before wreck. So I'm like, oh, we don't got to wait till breakfast now. We're about to see this go down right now. And, you know, like I said, we came up charged up getting in fights. So I'm, I'm down to see a little, little scrap. Let's see it. So they, the dude tries to come out. And, and the one dude's like stocky. He's like a short, heavy, stocky um kid. And then the other kid was a little, little. they're both like kind of short, fat kids. But the one dude was stocky. So when the tall dude comes out of the cell, the little dude runs up. What's up? What's up? He goes back in his cell, closes the door. He got shook. So the, the dude that got him to go back in his cell goes up to the cell like, yo, you forgot to pop his door. So they pop it. And they're like, yo, what's wrong? Why didn't you come out? And he, he, he was so shook. He was like, oh, I was sitting in my bed. He didn't know what to say. So he comes out slow. In jail, you probably know this. You're not supposed to sit on top of the table, right? You sit on the stool, on the chair part, right? And so he sat on top with his feet on the stool. Big mistake. I, I, I guess they didn't see him, so they didn't tell him to stop. So the one dude, the, the other dude's on the phone. He's not really on the phone, though. He's just pretending. So then the dude goes up to him to stock him. He's like, you say he's going to smack me, white boy? He turns. Boom, cracks him. He goes flat on the table. The dude drops the phone, comes running up. They swing him sideways on the table. So now he's on flat on the table like this. They're beating him out of his pants. They're, they grab him by his ankle. One got him by his face. They're whooping him. He's red in the face. They drag him off the table on the ground. The ones who just standing over him, just wailing on him. He's sitting there, pants down here, red in the face, just like this, looking stupid. So I'm like, first lesson learned. Not that I'm a, I'm usually a doer. Not a, I don't like to really be like frontline shit talker. But, you know, in jail, I know there's certain situations you could bluff to de-escalate it. I'm like, I got to be very careful with this because these young boys just washed this tall dude up and made him look like a fool. So that was the first lesson, right? Like, <laughs> That was the eye care. <laughs> you got to really be careful how you handle things. And if you handle it too soft, vice versa, right? So they moved me up the hill, which is out of the 12 units. You could say SRG gang unit and it's like the worst, but those dudes don't even come out the room barely, right? So it's like... The active compounds units, it's top four. Um, yeah, top, top, I'd say three or four. So I go up there, and I walk in there, and it was, like I said, I have all type of friends, so it doesn't matter, but these, these there was these hood-ass dudes from New Haven, Hartford, um, just so happened to all be African-American dudes, 24 dudes in a unit in, in our wing. I'm the only Caucasian, and um, my boy Poppy was Puerto Rican dude. And it was, it was... It was turned up. Like, I walked in there. They off to the slamming the cards, yelling. One dude's in the shower throwing combos, rapping. I'm like, yo, this shit is wild. Like, there's just a lot going on. I'm like, this shit is... But, it's, but it was cool. Nobody, like, really did anything. I met my celly, my boy Nick from Hartford, um, Jamaican dude. Cool as hell. Um, real recognized real. He knew I wasn't trying to be anything I wasn't. We slap, You know, I got to slap box with him a little bit. Wrestle, you know, earn my respect. Um, and then my boy, shout out to Randy from Stanford... He actually, um, him and my boy Banger beat a body recently. So shout out to them. God bless them, their families. I know the victims' families too. God bless everybody involved. But Randy was in my wing. So Randy comes up to my window. He sees me like, yo, he used to see me when I would be in the village. So I, I, he didn't know me well, but he knew like, all right, I got to have this dude's back. He used to hang out with us. So I always had Randy and then my Sully and me got mad cool. And then he had three dudes from his hood in our wing. So off the strength of me being cool with him, they were solid. So I had like five, six guys that like were tough ass dudes that were rocking with me. So it, one of the dudes, quick story, he had half a thumb and, and a glass eye. He's like, yeah, you see that dude right there? He had somebody stood over him with a shot. This is my boy's best friend, Marcelli. Somebody stood over him with a shot. He tried to blow his head off. That was the result. He said, yeah, remember when Max B was in Hartford and his DJ Messiah got robbed? He's like, yeah, he's the one who did it. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is, okay. So this is now where I'm in real compound, right? I'm seeing, well, first, I mean, I see my, my, my Sully one day, he pulls out a pen. He goes, look at this shit. Pulls the pen open, there's a fucking needle sticking out of it. It's a one hitter. You can't really, you could get one good shot with it because you got to like use like wet tissue to kind of mesh it together and keep it so it's sturdy for one good one. But he had a little one-hitter in the cell. So I'm like, all right, I'm here a month. I'm already seeing pokers. Now, the thing that I liked about those, though, I didn't have one personally. But I'm Mr. I don't want to get caught with no contraband and go to the box guy. I, I didn't show it. But, like, my boys that I've trusted a little bit, I'd be like, yo, even if we got to—can we handle this in the cell if we got to fight? Whatever. I'm trying to watch my TV, eat my food, because my time is flying like that. I'm pretty sure it's not going to go as fast in a room with nothing for a week, staring at the wall, talking to myself, right? So I knew with those little pokers, the, the vents, you could you could dump it in the vent. 
it, it, it fit. Cause it's from the you know the the battery needle thing, right? That trick you never heard of that. Mm -mm. You could you could use the stool because we had stools attached to the table in the cell. You could pry open a battery and there's a little needle inside. So then they take the pen off the pen, the like the they be like the outer structure of the pen. And then you tuck the needle with the top, and they take like wet tissue and kind of like bind it. So it'd be good for one shot. Like I guess whatever. I wasn't planning on poking anybody, but it was wild when I seen it. I'm like, damn, I hope you don't put it under my bed or some shit line <laughs> me up. But I was like, fuck it, it is what it is. Um, not long later, a couple probably within, like I said, this first couple months, then he coming down to the table at, at, at a chow. I'm sitting next to my cellie. He opened his bun, his weed on his tray. So now I'm seeing drugs. I'm seeing, I'm like, oh shit, this is crazy. I find out the kitchen dude was doing his thing. He was there for like three, four years. He was getting contact visits. He was getting it in. Were you getting picked on at all? Because I feel like if you were this jittery and excited over it at this time, yeah, they would have uh, had a, like a target on you. I think I will say this: when I first went to I, I am I'm, I'm really excited right now. So it's um, <laughs> I might be a little more excited than usual, to be honest with you. But um, they definitely remember I said it was kind of wild when I walked in. Our side didn't have Rex, so I went right in the cell with my cellie, and they were out and they could see in my shit. And it came, one dude, I remember he came to the door, like he looked nervous. I was. I, was, I mean, it's my first time on compound. You, it's like the how much build up to get to this moment, and it's like, but at the same time, like, I knew I just couldn't like. You can't cower. Like, if something happens, you got to go back at it, and that's the only way you're gonna get. That's the best way to get through it in these situations. You got to. I basically said I got to revert back. I know I can't be this way anymore. I got to change. Like I, that part already entered my mind. Like I don't. I shouldn't be in this situation. That I'm better than this. That that had been hit my mind. I'm not an idiot. I'm a smart kid, but. You also got to get through what you got to do. So, like, I knew I had to keep it edgy for sure to get through this this stuff. So, you know, they 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 knew, but I settled in pretty quick. And once I got cool with the right people, you good at that point. So, my Sally, the Jamaican one, he there was this other dude. His name was Angel. He used to wear the green jumpsuit. The green jumpsuit is high bond. So that means you did some shit, or you either tried to escape or you did some shit. I found out that he had um, beat a dude to death with a two by four. So my celly's funny because he was really like that. My celly's like, man, I freaking, you know, F him. I don't know if we're allowed to curse, but I was like, hey, he's like, F him. He's like, man, he's the fucking sister. You know, like, like he, ain't, he ain't hard. Like, you know, he's not like that, basically. But I'm like, all right. Like, so me and my boys from home, we would, so we could go see each other on Sundays. We go to church. So that this is relevant. So we sit down at church. I'm sitting next to my cousin Cody. And who comes walking up? To sit next to Cody, Angel, the murderer, the 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 he got manslaughter. I think he got twenty five. So the murderer comes up. There's mad seats, like <laughs> like it wasn't like there wasn't a lot of places to sit. So I'm like, oh shit, I already know what I'm. I already know what's happening. He goes up to my cousin. He goes, oh, what's up, man? What, what's your name? What, what, you, what, you, what are you in here for? Cousin's like assault, but he knows he's getting checked. But my cousin, my cousin's not a smooth talker, like. I'm the one who would do a talk in a situation like that. My cousin's just going to pop when it's time to go. Like, he's not a good talker. So my cousin's kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, I got six months. He's lying. So we really got three. Just like trying. I'm like, I see where this is going. So he goes, he goes, you know what I'm here for? My cousin's like, what? It's like murder. It's like, see that watch? It's like, you should let me get that. Because I'm going to be here a lot longer than you. I'm going to need it more than you. I know my cousin's going to, not, not that he was scared, but it's like, he's not going to know what to say. So I'm sitting right there. My cousin's here. He's there. I kind of just lean forward and I'm like, "Bro, um, I was like, I gotta, I was like, just so you know, bro, um, and I was mad respectful. I'm not even gonna sit here and act like I got gangster with the dude. I just let him know, basically, like, I basically I talked to him like he was dumb, but letting him know that I understand how this shit works. And I basically said to him, "Look, man, there's a problem with that because that's my little cousin, and." I can't let him give that to you because if he gives that to you and somebody sees it and he goes back to his unit, they might try to get him to give him something else. And I can't have my cousin in that situation because I'm not in the wing with him. We're in the same college, but he's in the other wing. I'm, I'm, I'm getting word to him and stuff, but I'm not directly next to him. I can't protect him personally. So I'm like, so we, so I can't allow him to give that to you because then he's going to be in some shit when he goes back to his unit. Um, like, you know, we don't want any problems or anything like that. But, like, I'm just letting you know, like, he's not by himself. So, like, we can't let you take it. And I think, and we and we're G'd up about it, like, quiet. Like, not making a scene, not, you know, trying to just handle it. And I think he respected that we didn't make a big deal out of it. And he kind of realized, all right, this dude's looking at me dead in my eyes. He's dead ass not scared of me. And I knew, I had to drop on him. I knew about him a little bit already. And I think he 
probably thought to himself, I'm going to look awfully stupid if I get the ever-living shit kicked out of me by these two white kids in the middle of church in front of everybody. But like, right? Because they're not backing down. And it, it just, he was honorable and he just, he, he moved on. It wasn't like a big deal. I'm not going to say I punked him. I definitely didn't. But we just held our ground and it worked out in our favor. So eventually I find out these kids from New Haven, because now commie's coming, right? Things like that. I get a CD player. I can see dudes at the door looking. Oh, man, here we go. My celly's like, we good. You don't got to worry about none of that. But I did hear that when I go to court, the New Haven dudes might try you. But his court wasn't for like a little while. So I'm like, oh, man, now I'm stressed. I'm like, damn, I don't want to go to Fox. Oh, here we go. You know, like if it happens, it happens. But I'm not trying to, but whatever. So... Like, I think the next day he was supposed to go, they, like, changed his date. He didn't go. I'm like, oh, thank God. Right. Because there's definitely luck and hands that you're dealt in these situations that get somebody that really, I don't even want to say like me. Even people that, because I'll say I was more built than a lot of other people, too. People, if you play your cards right, you can get through it. You know what I mean? And, uh, or, or even with some lucky, lucky circumstances. So by the time his next court day came, they just so happened to move me. And this is on my father's grave. I didn't snitch nothing. They're like, oh, they're going to get me. Not Nothing like that. They just so happened to move me. And um, that was it. So now I'm in a, a different unit. And uh, I'm not going to like create a whole new network. You kind of got to start over. It's kind of annoying. But, you know, I was solid. I think I had a, my, my young boy, Brooklyn, from Stanford. He was over there. So and he was already kind of tapped in. So, you know, it's the same thing, right? You know somebody kind of helps you get your feet wet. Um, you, over there was more wild, like young boys running in cells, snatching stuff. Um but they were only doing, like, you know, picking on, like, the weak ones and stuff. I think when I first got to that unit, the craziest thing I saw, it was a, not craziest, but it was it was pretty disrespectful. Dude from Wilton, wealth, another wealthy town, he got caught for selling some coke. So he's sitting there talking, like, oh, yeah, I got six months, yada, yada, yada. I'm sitting there, like, six months? Like, like, does he not realize that that's, like, I'm thinking he's six months for coke, you definitely told on somebody. You should not be saying that. So these these dudes from Bristol, they were Caucasian dudes, but these were my boys. They were rough as hell. They're from the same hood as Aaron Hernandez. They're wild. My boy Randy. So they're playing nice, nice with the kid. They're meanwhile they're making a concoction cup with everything in there, just the semen and piss, and, and they call him to the door one day. Yo, let me holler at you. I got to tell you something. Yo, come here. Splat right through the door. S semen, piss all over his face. And he was, I think the day before he got an argument with somebody behind the door, he's like, I'm like that. Da, 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 da. He was making a whole scene. They splattered him right face. He didn't do shit. So we're like, it was just stuff like that where it's like, it's sick, it's disgusting, but it's pretty, it's kind of funny because he was running his mouth crazy. So eventually I, I'm there for a long time in that, in that unit. I get moved to the A wing, which is like a well, worker's wing. So I get a job. And, um, so a lot more came with that. And then another side note too, there was there was a pedophile. Cause I, I didn't want to get by this part because I know, you know, people want to hear what happened to pedophiles in jail. There was a pedophile dude. He was there for a while, the same unit. Cause there was one wing, it was kind of like I was on Kalanapin. So like there it was like a medication unit, but there was like the shit on the wall wing with with the with the child molesters and stuff. Then there was just like the wild, like motherfuckers need their pills wing. And then there was like the worker wing, which was like the most normal wing. And there was actually some pretty tough dudes I met over there too. Like, I think, I think that wing, that unit was slept on a little bit, but my boy Ace was, he was like the head of the whole unit. I'll get to him. Well, he's part of the, the, the pedophile story actually. So it's perfect. Um, my boy Ace, he was like the, the first man in the kitchen, top job in the cottage, biggest, baddest dude, been there the longest. You don't play with Ace. I'll, I'll tell another story why you don't play with him in a minute. But one day they run in there. He Ace's thing, he'll wrestle with people like jokingly. So the kid had a Game Boy, so they were plotting on him. It was like a three, four hundred dollar item. They run in, Ace is wrestling him. The other dude ran in, snatched it off his bed. They took his right. So so oh, ha, 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 we're joking, we're joking. Next thing the kid come out snitching, big freaking rat, freaking sicko. Whatever. They got back for that. Not Ace, but the other dude got back for it. Whatever, whatever. But to tell you a quick story about Ace, just to let you know how tough this dude was, because he had beat a couple people up. We had, you know, the copper wire from the converter box. You guys had the converter boxes for your TVs and, yeah, and, yeah. and feds. So, you know, the thick wire from the um, the trimmers that gets you, like, all the channels. Yeah. I don't think the dude knew it was our cell, but I'm sleeping one day. Ace was out of work because I was afternoon shift, and I hear somebody at the window. I look, and I see the dude leaving the window. I knew who it was, but I'm like, <laughs> this is probably funny. Why would I say something when I know if I tell Ace? That's his wire anyway. I know Ace is going to handle it easily. No problem. So instead of me being like, hey, motherfucker, give, give my wire back. All right, I saw you. 
I tell Ace, Ace comes back. Where the wire go? Yo, Corey and C-Wing took that shit. Boom, Ace walks off. He goes over there. He starts pressing him at the window. I heard what happened. I didn't see it, but I heard he was pressing him at the window. They're denying it. They don't know. They don't know. Corey Selly was our other boy who was a worker, too. So he comes up later in the story, too. So Ace comes back to the cell. He's tight. The dude's cousin comes over, talks to them. They slide the wire back. So we're in the cell. Ace is tight. And then the, the dude's cousin come over. He goes, easy, Ace. It slides it under. But this is how wild this dude was. Because when he left the cell, he said, he said, you don't give me my wire back? When I see you outside, I can punch you in your shit. Word of my daughter. Walked away. Didn't even wait for a response. That wire came back so quick. So this was my celly. This was my road dog. So that's kind of how I got held down to A-Wing. Um, same thing, slap box. Like, this dude used to pick me up, throw me on the top bunk. Beast. I was probably like two, I was putting on weight too. I was 250 when I left. So he was a big boy. So, um, the, yeah, so that guy. And then there was, uh, okay, so now my Albanians come to the unit. A couple of those guys got locked up too. <laughs> this is something that gets crazy. So they got my one boy in C-Wing, my, my other boy 50. He'll be in the story later. He, he rest in peace, 50, he passed away. Um, and then I'll get to that too, where a bunch of guys where I was in that unit with for six months, they're all like a lot of them are dead now. So we'll get to that in a minute. But um, 50 comes in. So now we're kind of on some, like, all right, we back, like we're, we're wilding. Um, one day I'm, when I'm working, I go to, I get called to go up top. I probably had to meet with like the, 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 the medicine person. The reason I was on the medicine was for court. It looked good. Oh, he's never been through anything like this before. I think I was actually selling him. But then when I was in jail, I was taking him because I was like, fuck, I'm going to get fucked up for a little bit. This, this shit sucks, right? Yeah. So I'm probably getting called up for like a med visit or something. Dude comes in my cell and tries to sneak me. He was one of the other workers. I guess he was trying to take some of my commie, whatever. So we kind of we kind of like engage, you know, details of the details. We kind of scuffling. He actually tripped me on the bed. I do the good old classic spinorama trick. He goes to rush me. I slip it, spin, get him on a bed, rag him. Literally throw him out the cell, kick him in his ass. They all watched. Like like the other workers. The big dude, the dude's cousin worker. He, he's allowed him out. He watched Ace watch. They saw me. They heard the commotion and saw me wash him up. So they're like, oh, shit. Like, he could hold his own. But they, this dude was from the south in Hartford, though, Puerto Rican dude. So his other boy was in our wing, too. So... He was he was also working. Yeah, they both had jobs. So the other dude came up to my cell like later that day, and was like, "Yo," and I was cool with dude. Like we had no problem. He comes to me. He's like, "Yo, cell cleanup next week. We gotta catch the fade because he's from my hood. I don't like that you like did all that extra shit at the end. Like you ain't have to embarrass him like that. Like you trying to play my hood or some shit." He's like, "We good, but like we got we definitely gotta catch that." So I'm like, "This is weird because now I'm cool with dude, but like I know we gotta fight. I'm seeing him every meal. It's a little weird, but he wasn't like." You gotta remember, I was doing all this training shit. I'm an athlete, bro. Like, you've been riding here for like three years. You don't even work out like that. Like, there's, there's no way he's fucking with me. There's no way, absolutely no way. So it's not even a situation like it was more dangerous than other situations because I didn't expect it. With him, it's like, how do I want to do it to him? Like, I'm not even trying to be cocky. He just wasn't that tough. How am I gonna do it to him? But he, I think he thought like Caucasian kid, oh easy target. <laughs> he, he didn't see the fight either. So I don't. I think whatever. So he comes in. But I find out the day before, remember, I don't want to go to the box. I find out the day before, last time he did a lockup with somebody and got washed up, he told on him. So I'm like, damn, the whole point of locking up is to avoid going to the box. If I'm not clear, locking up is when two inmates come to cell and you just fight and somebody kind of keeps a lookout and you get it on. You, you kind of push the door to tight little space, you get it rocking. So dude comes in he got this mean look on his face and when he see my real stance because you know I, I've been training for years bro I was a second degree brown second degree brown belt before I played hockey so was, I've been fighting my whole life like he walking he see my, my little boxing stance bro I seen his face shift from like trying to look tough walking into like oh fuck and I three pieced him so fast but my plan was don't put him out or hurt him or like I wasn't even really trying to bruise him just touch his face as much as I felt like it. Just show him I could have do I could do it. Not that I'm like this, but I could do whatever I wanted to him. Put it that way. Could be his daddy if I wanted. And just to prove a point, so I don't get bothered again. That's really that's what I'm saying. You gotta get into kind of a sick space, right? So I I piece him up. We're kind of just tussling, whatever. See, I was coming. Oh, he ducks out. Well, acts like he's just sitting there talking because the door was blocking. So you, you duck out. See, I walking by. Came back and I literally did the same three pieces, opposite hands. <laughs> Caught him again. Boop, boop, boop. We, 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 he, he did push me up on the desk at one point and kind of catch me in my forehead because, because I was kind of backing up and then the desk was low, so I kind of like went on top of it. He, that's, that's when he caught me because I, I hit the desk, 
But then after that, same thing. Spinorama works like a charm in a cell. I'm telling you, hit him with Spinorama. I, I I hit him. I got like I like push his hands up, hit him in his stomach. Then I, I, he drops his hand. And I go to go high, and I literally stop the hook right in front of his face. I didn't want to do it to him. I know, dude. We're we're cool. I was like, yo, you've been done, bro. Get the fuck out of my cell. I turn around. He rabbit punches me like four times in the back of the head. I turn around laughing. They're laughing at him. But I'm like, you got your shit off? You good? Left it at that. Then his celly, the big dude, the, the worker dude, he came up to me out there. He's like, I seen what you did. That was some real shit. Dab me up. I'm good. Right? You got to be smart, bro. You can't be a fucking idiot. I'm trying, I'm trying to get through this shit and get the fuck home and move on. You really do remind me of 1090 Jake when you're sharing these prison really? stories. <laughs> really? I'm, uh, sh- that's so crazy. We live in all this shit. So, yeah, at that point, I was pretty much situated. Um, they rotate the CO. So now the CO that came to our unit knew me from I up the hill. So he's like, I mean, I was always respectful. Like, I'm not going to be an asshole to a cop. No, he person. Like, he, how the fuck am I going to get my door open? I got to be nice to this guy. You know what I mean? So... Not nice, but like respectful. Not like ass kissing, snitching or anything like that, but just cordial. So he knew, all right, I'm cool. My name's my last name's Orma. So he's like, I'm cool with Orman. Um, let me get control of the unit through him. Cause he seems pretty situated. So he he, he would use me and, and his, he'd say, Yo, I'm fair, just don't mess with me, whatever. Ask Orman, I'm 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 straight, but you know, just just when I ask you to do something, do it, you know, that type of thing. So he would come in at three. As soon as he came in at three, my door opens. Handles and windows, Orman. You do not need to clean the handles and windows every day. But he'll pop for me every day. That's my guy. So I'm starting to get that juice now. Like, And we're rolling up. We're being fat asses. I gained 50 pounds. I'm working out. We got a nice little regimen. I'm rolling up with fungos. We're, going, we're fat asses. We're working out. We're just blowing up. So like, you run out of material sometimes. So I got the juice where I could be like, yo, um, Lopez, can I go? That's the CEO. Can I go to B-Wing? Um, I need to grab a bag of chips. I'm, I'm sure I need, you know, comedy comes Monday. I got to roll up tonight. Bet he'll pop for me. I could literally go in there and fight. I didn't, but like I had it like that. One day, 50 had a problem with somebody. I got the door open. 50 went in there, got it in. So we, we were doing our thing. We were holding it down for Stanford. We made us look good. My other buddy Mirza, he's over there in C-Wing. He almost gets into it with the dudes. I get into it too. It was a, it was a whole thing. We, but we got through it. It was fun. Um, some of the other stuff that happened when I was there. Rest in peace, 40. He's from Norwalk. Because I got a lot of, from my, my boy from private school, I know a lot of people from some wild places in Norwalk too. So that's why I say it like I'm, I don't know 40 directly, but I know people close to him. So rest in peace, 40. He was in there in MYI, and um, he didn't take his gunshot medication. <clears throat> so he he died, I guess, gangrene, right, whatever they call it. Um, he died from gangrene in prison? That's when you don't take your medicine and it gets infected, right? Yeah, I mean, I think gangrene can, yeah, it can right? form from infections. Something yeah. like that. I, whatever it was, he wasn't taking it. He got shot before he went to jail. He had medication. He wasn't going to med call. And he died from not taking the medication. So, and I actually ended up getting cool with his celly later, too. My boy Giovanni, he was, that's, he found him. So, like, imagine you locked up, you 16 years old. And this, this is what I'm saying, man. Like, people think being gangster is cool. Imagine being 16 years old, you locked in a room with a dude, and you shake him to get up for dinner, and he's dead. Like, this shit is whack, bro. Like, this shit is crazy. But um, that was one of the wilder things. They locked us down. At one point, everybody's worried about me because SRG made the news at home. They popped the door one day and one of the one of the SRG dudes stabbed the CO, locked us down again. So, like, that was a big thing. Like, oh, my God, I heard CO's get stabbed. Like, we're nowhere near that, the, the gang unit at all. But, I mean, there's definitely gang members, but it's not like, you know, I guess Cali, like, all these play, they, they, like, proclaim it, right? They'll make it known. You want to kind of keep it quiet unless you want to be in freaking... SRG is basically the box. You might you might be able to get, like, commie and stuff, but you ain't going nowhere. So it's like, you're better off. There's a lot of dudes with blood and stuff, and they just kind of... You don't really talk about it too much. You just... You, we know who's who. Like, especially if you're from the town or, or New Haven, Hartford. They know who's who. It's like, doesn't really need to be, like, repped necessarily. But, um... What else? I mean, there was there's so many freaking stories. You, you got any, uh... Questions about the youth facility? I kind of I like your questions. Yeah, no, I mean you 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 covered all you you, you shot off all the stories. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, I went through it, man. Yeah. I, 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 no, I was giving you your space to just uh, to name them off. It, it's better that way when you like share complete stories like that. Yeah, because uh, yeah. you get everything that was on your mind and whatnot. Yep. But it, it, it's interesting hearing like your perspective from the youth facilities because we've had had people on the show to kind of give us insight from like this youth facility that you're explaining the what is it NYI right um so Manson Youth Institution it's basically if 
That's in like Cheshire. So so mm. Cheshire's the adult facility and it's across the street. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, it's got quite the reputation. Yeah, I mean, I just I, I have I'm 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 I don't like I mean, these generations not as tough as us, man. That's just my opinion. But so back you had then, quite the wild year. Back then yeah. it was wild. Yeah, and I mean, there's so much more stuff. It's it's like even with the job, next thing I'm like, I'm taking out the garbage. I'm I'm sending radios over to my Cody because his guy from his guy is just coming out. I'm sending, you know, so it's like you're moving things around. Comp, I wasn't like a drug dealer or anything like that. But uh, so you end up getting out after a year. Yeah. So so, it, which was funny. I got served with the papers for the lawsuit on my birthday, December twentieth. Oh, they hit you with a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm for getting, the fight. Freak, these gangsters, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they sued but, uh, you for the fight. Yeah, you already got you, you freaking dude. Thankfully, because my life was in jeopardy because of the prior gun threats and them wrestling over the waistband, my life was at risk. So my homeowner's parents, homeowner's insurance paid the $60,000. Oh, really? Thank God. Okay. He got 160 racks and a new Audi trying to flex like a drug dealer around town. Do you ever think your life would be different and you would have saved yourself a lot of pain had you been able to continue to your hockey career? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'll say about this. I would have never met my wife. Because, like, the time I was home and I met her, I would have probably been, at, like, away that weekend or something. So, now I got my kids. I wouldn't. Yeah, sometimes our greatest pain brings us yeah, man. to, or it's not sometimes, it's all the time yeah. that our pain brings us to where we're supposed to be. Yeah, bro. What's something you want your kids, when they eventually watch us one day, to take away from your story? And just do the right thing the first time. <laughs> Save yourself the trouble. Yeah, I mean, and you know, even my daughter now, I see little little temper moments, stuff like that, and I'm on it because because I'm the kid that was in those little classes. I know what they're gonna tell you to do, yeah. and I'll, I'll work every day. Never gonna give up on my kids, my family. If I got to do it every day for the rest of my life, sit there and pull my daughter aside and have talks and be there for her and you know calm her down if she's feeling upset. We're gonna figure it out. It's just that's where my head's at. Um, and even the other day, my cousin Cody. His, like, best friend OD. I'm on the phone with him for three, four hours, FaceTime, hanging out. He's in the freaking house. The, the guy's dad has his gun license. They got, like, 20 guns in the house. But he's so cool with my cousin. He's just letting him in, whatever. So my cousin's at the kid's house by himself, drunk as a skunk. My cousin has, you know, we're Irish. We drink. Drunk as a skunk with the, with the, on the camera. I said, cuz, put that shit back get in the car and get the hell out of there now. Because I didn't trust where his head was at because my cousin can be bugged out too. You know, we all go through things, right? Get out of there, cuz. Because you you don't need to be around now. Get out of there now. And he went and chilled with his brother. So it's like, who knows? You know what I mean? I'm, maybe it sounds a little dramatic. He's probably fine, but you never know, bro. Yeah. My cousin's been through a lot too. So like... And you've been through a lot. Yeah, yeah, so it's like... But this is what I'm trying... I just any way I can help, I do what I can. But at the same time, I got my own stuff to deal with. So people understand that, but... Yeah. That's what I'm on now. Well, Jerry, thank you for coming yeah. on the show and sharing your story and your journey and, and your growth. You've you've definitely come a long way. It's an honor to be here, bro. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a good time. <laughs>